All right, so um, this is going to be how you solve kinematics, the step-by-step -step process of how to solve kinematic equations um, for both x and y directions. It's the same for both of them. Actually, a lot of these steps work for um, any physics problem, but I kind of have the equations written over here. This isn't an official step. I just did that so I wouldn't have to pause the video. So ignore these for right now. So step one, and this is for any physics problem. Draw a picture. Also act out if it's a motion problem, which is basically what we're dealing with most of the year. Act it out if you can, but definitely picture it in your mind's eye and draw a picture. So let's go with the, um, let's start off with the y direction for the little bottle thing that we're doing, where you squeeze the bottle and the lid comes off. So I would draw something, it does not have to be a pretty picture, I'm going to draw like the little bottle and see, I'm drawing this line, this is sometimes useful. I'm going to start measuring um, the displacement of the cap thing from the height of the bottle. So like if this is the floor, I'm going to say my zero is the height of the bottle. So what's this thing going to do? It's going to go up in the air, it's going to stop and turn around and come right back down, hopefully. Now a couple of things on that. It's going to have an initial velocity because it's going to be traveling when you start to look at this. So it'll have an initial velocity, let's call that VI. Then it has to stop to turn around. I think most of you know that. And uh, that's the velocity at the top. And then on the way down, since we're assuming that this only has gravitational force acting on it, it is going to have a final velocity that's equal to its initial velocity. Since it's uh, in what you call free fall, where only the gravitational force is acting on it, and it hits at the same spot that you launch from. This line I said is a good place to call zero. So you have the picture drawn, you kind of had to understand the motion. Now we've got velocity on here. What you can do now, let me change colors, is I would say, let's look at its displacement. It starts from zero. What I'm gonna do is this is your displacement. I know you can use delta x, delta y, whatever you want. I'm gonna use a lowercase h. And that's for the trip up and trip down. Um, I'm not putting a negative or a positive here because we haven't decided if we're looking at the trip up or the trip down. All right, so that's your displacement right there, H. Uh, we also need to look at your acceleration. So let's think about this. On the way up, it starts off with velocity and it comes to zero. That means that a force or something has to be slowing it down. And I've mentioned before, force and acceleration are BFFs. The way one goes, the other one goes. They do the same, they go in the same direction. So if this is going up and it slows down, think of it as like you were running and then someone grabs your backpack and kind of pulls you back. Um, it has to have a force going in the opposite direction and that means the acceleration is going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to draw this letter for acceleration. I'm not going to label it just yet. I'm going to wait a second. So it goes to the top and then it stops and it comes back down. And if you notice, this is the same magnitude but opposite direction for this final velocity. So that means that the acceleration, which was the acceleration, kind of like if you're on a skateboard and someone pushes you in the direction you're trying to go, kind of like that. Um, so your acceleration actually has to be pointed down on the trip down too because the object goes from rest to having a velocity, so it speeds up. Basically, if velocity and acceleration are opposite directions, the object slows down. If they're the same direction, it speeds up. Also, please avoid using the word deceleration. It's hard to know what you mean. If like you're changing directions, if you're slowing down, if acceleration, something weird happens. So let's just use like speeding up, slowing down, and then positive or negative acceleration and kind of keep them separate. So I've mentioned that this is in free fall. So that means that the only force acting on it is the gravitational force. So therefore, acceleration equals acceleration due to gravity, and it's actually negative. I'm gonna write this G up here. Notice I did not write negative because that points down. All right, so now we're ready to set this uh, problem up. We drew the picture. So the five things, A, T, V, I, V, F, and S for displacement. I always remember I say my friend still silverware and sells it online and his email address is at very valuable whoops at very valuable silver dot org or whatever kind of stupid but that's how I remembered it um let's see so first let's look at what we have do we have acceleration well yes we do it is negative g 
okay? Do we have time? Now, I mentioned in class, since you're going to be looking at either the trip up or the trip down, um, it's really hard to get time just right, especially in PowerPoint. So I told you guys to go ahead and solve for time. So I'm going to go ahead and put a question mark there. All right. Do we have initial velocity, final velocity, or displacement? I'm going to come back to the velocities. If you look, this displacement is h. Now, let's decide if we want to look at the trip up or trip down. I want to point something out. If you look at the kinematic equations, they all have acceleration, and they also all have initial velocity. Okay, now acceleration is going to probably have to be there for most of these, except in very special cases. And then you can kind of just use a graph to solve for it. But initial velocity might be zero. Actually, a lot of the times, but not all of the time, it is zero. So let's look at this in a way to where we can have the initial velocity zero. So if we trip up, the initial velocity is initial velocity or whatever it exists. It's positive. And um, the, where it ends up at the top would be zero. So that's probably not the best way to do it. You can, but it's not the easiest way. So if we look at the trip down, now your initial velocity for the trip down, okay, I'm supposed to write down. Anyway, for the trip down is zero. So let's do that. Let's look at the trip down. I'm gonna write look at down trip. Kind of ran out of room, but um, you always want to kind of justify why you're doing things. So yeah, so now I can say my initial velocity is zero and my final velocity is, I don't know, so I'm going to need to find that. Uh, we know that it's pointed downwards. You might want to put like a negative, I don't know. Also, since this is going down, remember you have to fall down, not up. Your h will be negative. Uh, let's talk about where this came from. And I'd like to see this in the beginning from y'all about like where stuff came from. So this g, I'd put object in free fall. Or you can put assume to be in free fall. All right, this zero, here's what I would do. I'd just draw a picture, right? Draw an arrow. There you go, that works. Okay, and then this negative h uh, measured in video. So um, I'm going to stop this one here as video one, and then I'll get into how to solve it in the next video.